Horses have played an essential role in human history for thousands of years. Serving as transportation, work animals, and even as symbols of status and wealth. In previous videos, we discussed the evolution and domestication of horses. In this video, we will explore the anatomy and physiology of these magnificent animals. The life cycle of a horse is fascinating from conception to death. From the moment they are born until they reach old age, these lovely animals experience a special journey. Depending on the breed, management, and environment, the modern domestic horse's life expectancy is 25 to 30 years. Here are the different stages in a horse's life cycle. Foal A horse of either sex less than one year old. A nursing foal is sometimes called a suckling. And a foal that has been weaned is called a weanling. Most domesticated foals are weaned at 5 to 7 months of age, although foals can be weaned at 4 months with no adverse physical effects. Yearling A horse of either sex that is between 1 and 2 years old. Colt A male horse under the age of 4. A common terminology error is to call any young horse a colt, when the term actually only refers to young male horses. Philly a female horse under the age of four. Mare. A female horse four years old and older. Stallion. A non-castrated male horse four years old and older. The term horse is sometimes used colloquially to refer specifically to a stallion. Gelding. A castrated male horse of any age. A few animals occasionally live into their 40s and even beyond. The oldest known instance was Old Billy, a horse from the 19th century who lived to be 62. In modern times, Sugar Puff, who was recognized by Guinness World Records as the oldest pony still alive, passed away in 2007 at the age of 56. Horses are measured from the highest point of the withers, where the neck meets the back. This point is used because it is a stable point of anatomy, as opposed to the head or neck, which move up and down in relation to the horse's body. In English-speaking countries, the height of horses is often stated in units of hands and inches. One hand is equal to 4 inches. A horse described as 15.2 horses 15 hands plus 2 inches. For a total of 62 inches in height. The size of horses varies by breed, but also is influenced by nutrition. Light riding horses usually range in height from 14 to 16 hands, and can weigh from 380 to 550 kilograms. Larger riding horses usually start at about 15.2 hands and often are as tall as 17 hands, weighing from 500 to 600 kilograms. Heavy or draft horses are usually at least 16 hands high, and can be as tall as 18 hands high, they can weigh from about 700 to 1,000 kilograms. The largest horse in recorded history was probably a Shire horse named Mammoth, who was born in 1848. He stood 21, 2 and 1 quarter hands high and his peak weight was estimated at 1,524 kilograms. The record holder for the smallest horse ever is Thumbelina, a fully mature miniature horse affected by dwarfism. She was 43 centimeters tall and weighed 26 kilograms. Gestation lasts approximately 340 days, with an average range of 320 to 370 days, and usually results in one foal. Twins are rare. Horses are a precocial species, and foals are capable of standing and running within a short time following birth. Foals are usually born in the spring. The estrus cycle of a mare occurs roughly every 19 to 22 days and occurs from early spring into autumn. Most mares enter an anestrus period during the winter and thus do not cycle in this period. Foals are generally weaned from their mothers between 4 and 6 months of age. Horses exhibit a diverse array of coat colors and distinctive markings. A specialized vocabulary has evolved to describe them, while most horses remain the same color throughout life. A few, over the course of several years, will develop a different coat color from that with which they were born. 
The basic outline of equine coat color genetics has largely been resolved, and DNA tests to determine the likelihood that a horse will have offspring of a given color have been developed for some colors. The horse skeleton averages 205 bones. A significant difference between the horse skeleton and that of a human is the lack of a collarbone. The horse's forelimbs are attached to the spinal column by a powerful set of muscles, tendons, and ligaments that attach the shoulder blade to the torso. Horses are adapted to grazing. In an adult horse, there are 12 incisors at the front of the mouth. Adapted to biting off the grass or other vegetation. There are 24 teeth adapted for chewing, the premolars and molars, at the back of the mouth. Stallions and geldings have four additional teeth just behind the incisors, a type of canine teeth called tushes. The horse's senses are based on their status as prey animals, where they must be aware of their surroundings at all times. They have the largest eyes of any land mammal, and are lateral-eyed, meaning that their eyes are positioned on the sides of their heads. This means that horses have a range of vision of more than 350 degrees, with approximately 65 degrees of this being binocular vision and the remaining 285 degrees monocular vision. Horses have excellent day and night vision, but they have two color, or dichromatic vision. Their color vision is somewhat like red-green color of blindness in humans, where certain colors, especially red and related colors, appear as a shade of green. Their sense of smell, while much better than that of humans, but is not quite as good as that of a dog. It is believed to play a key role in the social interactions of horses as well as in detecting other key scents in the environment. A horse's hearing is good, and the pinna of each ear can rotate up to 180 degrees, giving the potential for 360 degrees hearing without having to move the head. Noise impacts the behavior of horses and certain kinds of noise may contribute to stress, a 2013 study in the UK indicated that stabled horses were calmest in a quiet setting, or if listening to country or classical music, but displayed signs of nervousness when listening to jazz or rock music. Horses have a great sense of balance, due partly to their ability to feel their footing and partly to highly developed proprioception. The unconscious sense of where the body and limbs are at all times. A horse's sense of touch is well developed. The most sensitive areas are around the eyes, ears, and nose. Horses are able to sense contact as subtle as an insect landing anywhere on the body. Horses have an advanced sense of taste, which allows them to sort through fodder and choose what they would most like to eat, and their prehensile lips can easily sort even small grains. All horses move naturally with four basic gates. The four-beat walk, which averages 6.4 km per hour. The two-beat trot or jog at 13 to 19 km per hour. The canter or lope, a three-beat gait that is 19 to 24 km per hour. The gallop, which averages 40 to 48 km per hour, but the world record for a horse galloping over a short, sprint distance is 70.76 km per hour. Horses are prey animals with a strong fight or flight response. Their first reaction to a threat is to startle and usually flee. Although they will stand their ground and defend themselves when flight is impossible or if their young are threatened. They also tend to be curious. When startled, they will often hesitate an instant to ascertain the cause of their fright, and may not always flee from something that they perceive as non-threatening. Most light horse riding breeds were developed for speed, agility, alertness and endurance natural qualities that extend from their wild ancestors. However, through selective breeding, some breeds of horses are quite docile, particularly certain draft horses. Horses are herd animals, with a clear hierarchy of rank, led by a dominant individual, usually a mare. They are also social creatures that are able to form companionship attachments to their own species and to other animals, including humans. They communicate in various ways, including vocalizations such as nickering or whinnying, mutual grooming, and body language. Many horses will become difficult to manage if they are isolated. But with training, horses can learn to accept a human as a companion, and thus be comfortable away from other horses. However, 
When confined with insufficient companionship, exercise, or stimulation, individuals may develop stable vices, an assortment of bad habits, mostly stereotypies of psychological origin, that include wood chewing, wall kicking, weaving, and other problems. Horses are able to sleep both standing up and lying down. In an adaptation from life in the wild, horses are able to enter light sleep by using a stay apparatus in their legs, allowing them to doze without collapsing. Unlike humans, horses do not sleep in a solid, unbroken period of time, but take many short periods of rest. Horses spend 4 to 15 hours a day on standing rest, and from a few minutes to several hours lying down. Total sleep time in a 24-hour period may range from several minutes to a couple of hours, mostly in short intervals of about 15 minutes each. Horses are grazing animals, and their major source of nutrients is good quality forage from hay or pasture. They can consume approximately 2% to 2.5% of their body weight in dry feed each day. Sometimes, concentrated feed such as grain is fed in addition to pasture or hay, especially when the animal is very active. Horses require a plentiful supply of clean water, a minimum of 38 to 45 liters per day. Although horses are adapted to live outside, they require shelter from the wind and precipitation, which can range from a simple shed or shelter to an elaborate stable. Horses require routine hoof care from a farrier, as well as vaccinations to protect against various diseases, and dental examinations from a veterinarian or a specialized equine dentist. If horses are kept inside a barn, they require regular daily exercise for their physical health and mental well-being. When turned outside, they require well-maintained, sturdy fences to be safely contained. Regular grooming is also helpful to help the horse maintain good health of the hair coat and underlying skin. The study of horses is a fascinating subject, that continues to captivate researchers and horse enthusiasts around the world. Let us continue to marvel at the incredible complexity and perfection of these creatures, and let us strive to deepen our understanding of them, so that we can continue to provide them with the care and respect they deserve.